As STEM education takes hold across the country, one program is giving students a hands-on opportunity to learn about the environment and to impact their community in a positive way. This innovative program was featured on American Graduate Day on PBS for its work to keep kids engaged in school. Here's a look at Project Reservoir. For me, science is something about discovery. And I've spent many of my younger years before I started teaching kind of exploring. I lived right by here, and my first relationship with the reservoir was a no trespassing sign. There's something wrong with the no trespassing sign when there's a place for kids to go to. And we kind of like came up with an idea to start doing science here. It was saved by the Jersey City Reservoir Alliance, who we have partnered with. And we work with them, helping them with educational outreach, environmental education. For us, the reservoir is kind of like a um, idea center. Low and it comes in like that, and maybe. A lot of Project Reservoir is based in the classroom and based uh, here at Reservoir Number 3. Um, so we were able to establish two different aquaculture rooms uh, within the school. Teams are working on different aspects of environmental science. And there the kids develop their technologies. Um, they find solutions to problems that they basically identify here. This PVC pipe will also have like some poke holes around the sides. Robert O'Donnell is a great motivator. My skill set I'm the Madden Inventor. For example, the pump we have running at the reservoir now is from a boat. It's good to have a, a team atmosphere, not only for the students, but also with the um, teachers. One of our emphasis with Project Reservoir is creating teams. Currently, we have four different teams um, in this year's um, eighth grade competitions, developing uh, their projects for a national competition. Some of the teams are working on different aspects of environmental science. Some you may see behind me here um, are some past uh, chinampas that were built uh, by previous members of the project. Um, now, currently, uh, one is going to be modified into a floating uh, tilapia containment system, where we breed the tilapia um, within a lab, and we're testing their containment and their feeding trials, eventually for placement here um, per state approval. And this year, one of the group of girls decided they want to work in composting. So they're developing a, a solution to use uh, compost as bait, given the fact it's um, releasing CO2 and heat uh, to attract mosquitoes. The aluminum makes the heat for the mosquitoes to attract because that's what we want, that's our goal of our project. Our team is called the Earth Filters. Basically, we made filters for like people in need of water, so we try to clean dirty water through the filters that we, we created ourselves. Technology has been changing and we kind of adapt with it from year to year. We're doing websites, they do Twitter, they do um, Facebook pages. And they have components of their project that may be um, developed by a specific manufacturer or company. Um, so then the kids quickly realize, oh wow, we're using this in our prototype. You know, why not use Twitter or other uh, social media sites to, to outreach to them and then possibly get some sort of connection or some feedback from the company, just so the company can see that their product is being recycled into something that could benefit the environment. I think one of the, the best things about the social media as the students are learning how to use social media in a positive way. One of the new technologies is 3D printing. We create prototypes, and sometimes when we're doing prototypes, we need a specific plastic part for what we're doing. So our idea is that we can use the 3D printer to build these small parts to integrate them with other recycled materials. Kids currently, um, they're all looking to create apps. So that's something we're kind of looking forward to doing. And, um, uh, we have a partnership with a, an app-based company that uh, gave the kids membership for the year or so. And again, uh, we don't know how to do it, so we're just sitting in front of the computer and they're asking questions and we're saying, well, we're not sure. You basically have to look at tutorials and, and ultimately figure it out yourself. And, and within the last month, they've made some significant progress with that. We have to keep up as teachers for the students to look for new things that we can incorporate in our um, projects. <laughs> Looking forward to Project Reservoir, we need to look at how we can get it to be sustainable. And sustainable means the students from here take this to high school. Hopefully I can carry it out in high school with the other members of my team. Once you start um, becoming mature in high school, like you notice different things based on these sort of projects. So if I can start something like that in county prep, then that would be amazing because I'd get more kids involved into the school and into the project. Early exposure to science, lab work, I think really gives these kids an idea and a direction of something that they can do. Being in the reservoir, the kids actually have real life application to a lot of the science concepts that they learned. And I think that, you know, having Rob there and Joel there guiding them um, into this science facts and making it come to life, I think that's what the Project Reservoir brings. When I hear stories of these students saying, I'm going to be an engineer, or a parent asking, can my son be an engineer? Those are like things that I know, I, well, there I go, I can't quit. I'm gonna be stuck doing this for a while because 
Those are things that I know as a teacher are very important for their success further on. I think STEM-based activities you know, put the kids in control of, of what they want um, to, to be done and, and, and what they foresee in their environment and, and the change they want to make in it. To have those experiences is beneficial and crucial for the development of the kid and, and I think it's a great way to connect the child um, or the group of kids to that topic and then from there they develop that spark and then once that spark is ignited you know, they could take that and, and use that to ignite the, the rest of their future.